Martin, if I could begin by asking you what are the chances that we're going to have a US Grand Prix next year or perhaps the year after? And as an adjunct to that, how important is, in your view, the United States to Formula One and vice versa? Uh, well, I think it's inevitable that we have a US Grand Prix, whether we'll have one next year. I mean, many people are probably better placed. The signs in the last uh, six or seven hours have looked slightly more encouraging in that regard. But uh, so uh, you know, I, we're planning on the basis that there will be a US Grand Prix next year. Um, I hope there is. There's obviously uh, a lot of soil being moved and people trying to have one in Austin. So you know, I think that would be sensible. I think we probably uh, need more than one US Grand Prix. And I think we, I personally believe we need a different philosophy uh, in how we approach the US market. And I think the starting point is, you know, we're very fortunate. We've got a product which is loved and understood in Europe, in South America, some parts of Asia. Um, but I think because of that, perhaps we as a sport haven't been uh, as embracing and far-sighted enough for what, what I would call new markets. And we have to say, I appreciate there's been US Grand Prix, but to all intents and purposes, the USA is a new, new market for us. It's a big market. And so if we're going back, we've got to treat it as such. Uh, and I think you therefore have to, the starting point is you know, the states don't need Formula One. They don't need us. Um, we actually need them more than they need us. And that takes a different mindset. I think we, in my view, we need to, to commit to a good five years and longer. We need to commit to a program where the teams, commercial rights holder, everyone's working together to create uh, an understanding and awareness if you go into any new market with any product, uh, you, you, you try and understand the needs of the market. You might even tune your product to that market. You will then go into an advertising program to grow consumer awareness and understanding of the virtues of that product. And I think those are the sort of things we, we don't do because we're spoiled, because we've been able to go into markets where people wanted us, they understood us, and if you go anywhere in Europe, as I say, or South America or other parts of Asia, some parts of Asia, there is that knowledge of us, and therefore we turn up and put a show on and then leave three or four days later, and uh, we hope everyone's happy. I think if we're going to make a success in America, we've got to say, actually, you know, there are other forms of, of motorsport in America which are quite popular. Formula One doesn't have that coverage. And you know, it, it's, I think, product ideal for America. You know, America is the land of the automobile. So we are the pinnacle of motorsport. And you know, I think the American consumer is very capable of becoming very enthusiastic for the product. But we have to go out there and, and make sure people understand. Because Formula One, in some senses, has become a little bit too complex. But anyway, a nation that can understand baseball or American football must be able to understand Formula One. Uh, to us, those sports aren't immediately obvious. Well, I think the reverse is true. Formula One, with the subtleties on you know, the technology, the strategy, the curves, the DRS, all those, uh, the qualifying format, I don't think they're immediately obvious. We've got used to them, those of us within, and we, of course, enjoy them, or largely enjoy them within Formula One. But I think going to America, we've got to actually say, right, we've got to work together. If you look at the stakeholders in Formula One, the investors in Formula One, aside from the teams, the people who put their names on our cars, on our drivers, on our shirts, the people who are really investing money, uh, then nearly all of them, uh, or virtually all of them, the US is a vitally important market. So you know, if we put together a program which says, you know, for five years, we're really going to and promote this you know we'll put a cavalcade of cars through Times Square down Sunset Boulevard or you know a strip of in Miami or wherever we'll send drivers uh, en masse to promotions we'll you know we'll spend some money collectively on creating an awareness uh, I think you know it's it's conquerable we can do it and we should do it and we want to do it so going back to your question you know will there be one next year again it's outside my control uh, I don't know, will it? But you know, I do believe there will, we will be back in America. I hope this time that we go there in a sustainable, uh, energetic manner that promotes our sport and makes it successful. Couldn't agree with you more. Um, 
in terms of the promotion and the work that would need to go in to make Formula One work in the United States. But because that has never happened in the past, and because we basically still have the same structure within Formula One, mm. how realistic is it that, that we can see a change, a quantum shift? Well, I think we've got to learn, you know, I think we've got to learn from Turkey. I think we should be worried about China. Uh, I think we should be worried about Korea. So those are new markets. So fr historically, Formula One hasn't failed in, market, in the marketplace, so we haven't had that experience. Uh, but I think there are enough signs now that tell us, actually, you can't just arrive uh, for three or four days, put a Grand Prix on leave, and assume that progressively the populace is going to become enthusiastic. So, you know, I think there's much more discussion there are difficulties in the structure of formula one and the nature of formula one but i hope and believe that we all work together because you know it's it is i think vitally important to to formula one that we we do conquer america and we've been there lots of times and as you know we've not got it right lots of times so we need i think there it therein lies the lesson doesn't it the market's important we failed there before we perhaps were struggling in some other new markets. So clearly there is a message that says we have to do something differently. Martin, in the context of the world economy at present and the Eurozone problems mm. at present, how do you see the global Formula One championship panning out over the next foreseeable five years, for example, in terms of how many races in Europe, how many outside Europe? Well, there's been a progressive move from Europe to outside Europe, um, and there's been a progressive increase in races. Maybe that's a positive thing. But I think that uh, personally, I think a world championship of Grand Prix, each Grand Prix must be a significant event in its own right. And I think you go beyond 20, it's just another race, and the championship becomes all, and the Grand Prix itself fades. So I think 20 is there. Um, I think we mustn't forget you know, the heartland of our support, the, you know, the real hinterland of enthusiasm for Formula One, and, and that is Europe and some places, of, you know, South America and, and, and Asia. So we mustn't abandon those. But inevitably, just like any international business, we've got to look at the new markets and new opportunities. So India, China, uh, and you know, say for the purpose of this discussion, America, are those new markets and you know, the other parts of Asia as well. And so I think inevitably we have to go there. Now, there's undoubtedly, you know, a lot of stress in Formula One fiscally. It's expensive sport, uh, and you know, there a lot of teams are struggling. And I think you know we've tried hard, trying to work together to resolve uh, and assist those teams. But you know, that's and there's always tensions, uh, as we know. There's always reasons why the big teams might wish to break away on their own. Um, and there's always reasons why a commercial rights holder might welcome those sorts of things. But I think we've got to try and work hard to, uh, together to make sure that we control costs, that we work on the show and the spectacle, but also we work on the communication, the promotion and development of the sport. And, uh, you know, you can, like in all things, in all businesses, you can never do enough. So, you know, I'm not trying to be, you know, I'm not trying to be critical of any situation. I'm just reflecting just as... McLaren as a business, we never do enough to promote our brand, we never do enough to mm. enthuse a fan base, we, you know, we, and that will always be the case. You know, sadly, that's you know, the case after I've been here more than 20 years. If I'm here for another 20 years, I hope I'm still saying we're not doing enough, we've got to try harder. And that's the nature of competitive business.